What is going on, everyone? Chris with Journals, Comics, and Pop Culture. Today, we are going to dive into a very important topic of discussion, and that's how to find fair market value. But what we're doing is we're bringing back a video that I did some ways, ways back, but it is still very relevant for all of us collectors on how we can really gauge and find an actual fair market value when we're out trying to either buy or sell our books. I'm bringing this video back simply because I had a lot of comments recently, people asking me, how do I find real fair market value? So just keep in mind that the prices that are shown are definitely outdated, but the concept is still completely relevant. Before we get into the video, we're taking just 60 seconds to show off today's sponsor, PopCultureZone.com. PopCultureZone.com is an online shop focusing on hot new comics, including exclusive and incentive variants, CGC graded comics, and tons of other inventory, including pop culture toys and other collectibles, all at low and competitive prices. PopCultureZone.com ships all over the U.S. And if you are buying raw comics, they offer flat rate shipping of only $4.99. That's right, $4.99. Absolute craziness, right? And there's no taxes included, excluding New Jersey. PopCultureZone is also on eBay, where they hold a 100% positive feedback rating with over 8,000 completed transactions for this year alone. Make sure to check out the link to their website below as well as their eBay link. So be sure to give them a follow there as well. Fair market value. Obviously, fair market value is very, very important to almost every collector out there. It's important for when we're buying books. It's important for when we are selling books. It's important for when we're speculating on books, especially for hot keys. And we want to be properly informed on what we should be paying for these books. And if we're selling, we want to make sure we're getting that, uh, you know, rightful value when we're making those sales. So the question is, how do you gauge a proper fair market value? And sometimes it's a little more difficult than I think people think. All right, let's look at an example really quick, guys. We're going to look at multiple sources websites that is and we're going to look at one book and that book is going to be amazing spider-man number 365 this is the first appearance of spider-man 2099 obviously this book it has been a hot book it um has continued to increase you know really over the last couple of years but we're going to look at the fair market value from um three different websites guys let right here we have coverprice.com we're going to scroll down here and we're going to see that for a 9.8 right here, they have a fair market value of $165. It says it right here too, 9.8, all right? Now, we're going to go to Go Collect. What does Go Collect have for a 9.8? $220. Now, let's go to Comic Book Realm. Let's pull up what they have. And a 9.8? Oh, that's a 9.4, actually. Let's pull up 9.8. 365. Here we go. Uh, 9.8. $18.75. Now, um, Comic Book Realm was a bit cryptic uh, in terms of if they are using graded books or raw books. So that's definitely something to consider as well. Uh, but look, the bottom line here is you have three websites with completely different numbers all right so you ask yourself what's the right one well technically let me explain what's happening here why they're different and i'm going to also tell you what you can do to get around this and get a more accurate fair market value for yourself all right first thing is this all these different websites pull from different sources all right uh, we know the go collect pulls from ebay they pull from heritage as well uh, we know that um, cover price pulls from eBay. They also pull from my comic shop or whatnot. And, and there's obviously both of these sites use other uh, resources or, or databases as well. I am just throwing out a couple. So the, the, the sales data that's coming into these websites is going to be different for one. All right. But the biggest thing that alters fair market value, guys, is time. And you ask, what do you mean? What do you mean by time? I'm going to explain to you. I don't have an account 
for go collect so i can't give you each sale and break it down but we're going to go into covers price and look at each individual sale that they have guys and i'm going to explain to you why time is the culprit here that is giving um inconsistent fair market values across the board we're going to look at all the 9.8 sales okay cover price gets their fair market value and go collect does this too okay they take their fair market value by computing each sale from current we're in january 2021 all the way to let's see let's go all the way down all the way down boom february of 2013 guys okay they take all of these sales and they add them up right and then you divide it by the number of books sold. That's how you get your average. I hope most of us understand how to compute average, right? We learned that in school. But the problem with this, guys, with uh, a product, a commodity, a collectible like comic books, is that you cannot gauge a fair market value for something that sold eight years ago, right? Because guess what? The fair market value of what most books are eight years ago, they're nowhere close to where they are right now. That would be like, let's let's do the same thing with stocks, guys. That would be like taking, um, you know, Apple stocks that were like what a dollar in two thousand, or or Amazon stocks that were penny stocks in the year two thousand, and seeing where they're at today. I think Amazon stocks are. I don't even know. I, I I'm assuming I, I'm 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 thinking they're around six hundred or seven hundred dollars a share, if I can guess off the top of my head. Imagine if you took where the stocks were like every year or every quarter over the last twenty years, and computed an average and say, well, this is the fair market value that you should buy a share of Amazon stock for, or Apple stock for. No, that's that's not how it works. Now I know stocks is a little bit of a different beast. Um, you can't really get a fair market value for a stock. But the point that I'm trying to make is. Comic books like stocks usually increase in value over time, or they could possibly dip and decrease. All right, so we know that Cover Price does this. We know that Go Collect does the same thing. All right, let me show you guys the better tool that you guys can use. Now, first off, I always talk about this as well. The best tool that you can do is not use one source. All right. I also have eBay up here, and we're going to look at eBay in a minute. But whenever you want to know a fair market value of a book, I always encourage you to use multiple sources. Try to use three. For me, I use cover for more than not. My top three are cover price, eBay sold, and go collect. And I compare and compute between the three. All right. But here's what you can do let's take cover price, for example. If I want to know, say I'm in the market. For a CGC 9.8 Amazing Spider-Man 365, I love the character Spider-Man 299. Um, you know, Oscar Isaac is going to be voicing him in, in Into the Spider-Verse number two. I just, I, I want to, I want to get one to own. Or I'm a seller and I want to know how much I should put it on the market for. How do I get a fair market value? What I would do, guys, is I would compute my own by taking the average of the books sold current. And you could, I would say in this market, I would say six months. So I would go January all the way back to like uh, June or July of um, 2020. So let's see, I went way down. So that's about, about right here, all the way up to today. So you can see, let's look at these numbers, guys. 280, 293, 250, 270. 208, you know, we saw some lower sales under the $200 mark, 199, 225, 209, 275, 289, 265. But most of them are staying above the 200 mark. And remember, if we go back down, let's go back all the way to uh, like 2013, 14, guys, $84, $74, 69, 84. Look at this, 64, 84, 2015. Those market values back then are not current fair market value whatsoever. So I would take the first, uh, uh, the, the current six months, you add all those prices up and then you divide them by how many comic books there were. So say I was just to take these, it's one, two, three, four, 
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I would add those all up and then divide it by 14. And that would be my fair market value for the last couple of months. All right. I actually computed fair market value for the last uh, 11 months just the other day. And the fair market value was $216. Let's compare that to what um, cover price has here. 216 and they have 165. So that, that's a, a good amount above what they have as a fair market value because like I said, they're computing numbers from six, seven, eight years ago. Go Collect though is actually at 220. So I'm gonna assume that they updated theirs recently. Kudos to Go Collect. But here's the problem. They don't always update their stuff recently, all right? They, uh, they, they don't. Go Collect has a lot of books where their fair market value is outdated. All right. Um, and like I said, it's probably because either one, they haven't updated it or they're using old sales data, which is irrelevant today. So, you know, again, guys, you could go and put in any book that you're looking for and really evaluate it like this. And of course, another thing, guys, is you want to use eBay sold. So, you know, when you look at eBay sold for this book in a 9.8, let's look at what's been going on the last couple of weeks. 260, 259.99. Uh, here's 185, but what is it? It's a PGX, probably not a 9.8. <laughs> Sorry, guys, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> All right, I know, I know, I'm being harsh. All right, what is this? What is this? That's a raw copy. Here we go, 265. All right, here's a CBCS that looks like it sold for under 200. Uh, 220, your best offer here, 209. So uh, 195, 205. So this is. Some of this data is what we saw on cover prices uh, list that we went through, 201, 50, 200. So you can see that most of these sales are over 200. Uh, 220 best offer accepted, 224 bid. So, you know, you can gauge by seeing what's going on on eBay as well. You could do the same thing with this, guys. You could go back like the last month or two, add up all the sales, divide it by the number of books, and then you have a fair market value, all right? Um, so again, don't just go blindly into any of these sites. You know, I, I and guys, I still use um, the Overstreet Guide. I still use Overstreet Guide just to use as a reference. I usually, I, I mainly use the Overstreet Guide for uh, fair market value on run fillers or books that aren't, that haven't been popular over the last, you know, year or two. Uh, simply because, um, you know, like I said, the, the, the this comic book market can become irrelevant. Uh, excuse me. Uh, the fair market value for comic books on the market can be irrelevant really fast because the market is constantly changing. All right. So I really hope that this gave you guys a perspective on how to figure out a proper fair market value. I'm going to give, I'm going to go through one more example with you guys um, before the, uh, so before we end the video here. And, you know, this is more of a modern book. Obviously it's still, you know, almost 30 years old. Um, I think it's a little easier to gauge fair market value for uh, new, new releases, right. Um, or books that have been on the market for, you know, only a couple years or so, especially if you're looking for high grade, especially raw guys. It's easier to determine a fair market value. Let's talk about that real quick for raw books. Um, if they're a newer book, because you know there's going to be more high grades available. But monitoring raw books for older books is going to be tough. And there's no real way to gauge a really concrete fair market value. Because for one example, let's look at how cover price collects their raw data. They have high raw sales, but we don't know what grades they are. I mean, we're going to assume that these raw sales that went for 150, 125 were like near mint, most likely 9.8 type books, right? But we don't know. And then you have books that sold for 99 cents, a penny. I don't know what that's all about. But, uh, you know, these are probably beat up reader copies. And then you get an average raw. But, you know, this average raw could be very misleading because you can have outliers. You know, maybe more high grade books are selling. Um or more low grade books are selling. You, you just, it's, and that can skew an average number 
So, you know, most likely your average raw number is going to show you more kind of a range of lower grade books. You might be able to get your hands on those copies for lower grade, mid grade books. Right. So, like I said, that's why, especially when you get into like Silver Age or Bronze Age books, trying to find a raw fair market value is a bit tougher. And, and guys, when you go to eBay sold, when you go to eBay sold and you do um, a book and you want to find raw fair market value, it's tough because you, what can't you do? You cannot depend on the grade stated by the eBay sellers. And again, this is more usually for older books, but you know, you could see a, a seller can say that, oh, this book was near mint, near mint. But you know, and maybe it, it, it was really a very fine. You know, I see so many people saying like, oh, especially with Silver Age, Bronze Age books, very fine. And they're no better than like a 4.5. It's it's just crazy. Do never trust an eBay seller's grade on their books, guys. Never, ever, all right? But let's do one example here. Let's let's do an example of a book um, that I'm in the market for. Let's see. W what should we do, guys? What should we do? Let's do let's do an uncanny X Men fifty. First cover appearance of Polaris. Second appearance. This is a book that I have on my twenty twenty one want list. A uh, book that I'm I'm I've been after for a very very long time. All right, we're not gonna even look at nine point eight. <laughs> All right, uh, actually, well, shoot, yeah, let's not look at nine point eight. Let's look at let's bring it up on um go collect two, uh, uncanny X Men number fifty. Right? Ooh. Uh oh, oh, let's do this. Let's do this. There we go. <laughs> Let's look at a 6.0. How about that? A 6.0. Actually, well, let's look at this. 6.0, Go Collect has it 120. All right. 8.0, Go Collect has it 220. So what did I say? 120 and 220? 6.0 is 120. Oh, they're right there. 8.0, 220 and 216. Right there. That Hey, well, there you go. But look at this, guys. It's only one sale for 8.0. For 6.0, it's four. All right. Uh, what do they have for a 9.2? $400 for a 9.2? Uh, hey, look at that. Oh, oh no, 9.2, right? Yep, look at that. 9.2, 283. So again, Go Collect is probably on top of their, uh, their X-Men 50 because let's look at this 9.2 from cover price. Let's look what it's selling right here. 386, 520, 4 something, 390. What do they have in here? Books from 2012, 2013, where it's selling for 200 and something, you see? So again, what I would do is I would take these most recent sales, and this book's kind of been, been hovering. Well, you know, let's look, 2019, it started getting up towards the 400. So you know what I would do for this? I, there's not many sales here, but what I would do, I would take these, say I was selling this book, I would take these four sales right here and that's how I would, I would estimate my fair market value. And that's going to be probably around $440. That's a rough guesstimate. What does Go Collect have again? 400. So not, not too shabby. Right. Um, and then let's look at, uh, let's look at eBay sold for, um, let's do the 6.0. Let's see what we have on the market. Uh, let's do uh, X-Men 50. CGC 6.0. Let's see if there's any on the market. There's a restore for 150. Uh, we got one right here for 184. Uh, there's a 9.0. There's a 9.2. So again, it, it's tough when you don't have a lot on the market, but let's just take these into consideration. You got a restored and a, a blue label out of 6.0 at 184. And let's see what they were calling it again. Let's see. 6.0. 120. Yeah. I think they called it 122, right? Okay. So, you know, we could see that at least one book sold for a bit higher than that. Even a restored sold for 150. So maybe, you know, those are 
uh, a little outdated. Maybe they haven't. These were, this was from October. So maybe they haven't put that sale in. Let's look at this 9.0. Uh, 9.0 sold for 380. So that's that's really interesting when you look at uh, what they got for a 9.2. That's 400. So um, at a 9.0 to get almost to 400 in, in a bid on eBay, it goes to show that I'm going to look at this and say, well, those fair market values aren't that far off, but it it shows me that this book is still slowly increasing in value, right? And fair market value hasn't really caught up to what people are willing to pay for it right now, just because not that many books are selling on the market. There's not that many being sold. So when we look at the difference in the fair market value that's calculated on these sites and what they're selling for, you could say, well, the fair market value uh, is different than this. Well, this is this is a little higher than what the fair market values are calculated as, but I can understand why, because time passes. This is a silver age, decent key book, and they're going to slowly increase over time. So that's it, guys. That's the video for today. I really, really hope this allowed you guys to get a better understanding on how to gauge fair market value again, whether you're a uh, excuse me uh, in the market to buy or whether you're in the market to sell. I really hope that this shed some lights and, and gave you guys uh, a bit more uh, tips on what you guys can do in the future. Thank you all so much for watching. And again, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, please, please take some time to do so. I want to give a big shout out to all of my patrons as well. I appreciate you all. So again, thank you all so much. And until next time.